Right then guys, so a big change tomorrow. It's um it's gonna be not to do with bilers at all, it's all gonna be about these little guys. Those little guys, there. Yeah. Magwars. It's uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be long trotting on Don for grayling, grayling and chub. With the hopes of that, I'm gonna the same rod that I trot with on centre pin is a uh, um, to believe it or not when when I trot I like to use braid I really do like to use floating braid and then to that floating blade uh, braid I'll I'll tie a, a mono hook link just a section about about twelve foot a mono just really for for the 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 hook the hook length. I mean, the, the the section that I fished is streamer weed, and it's streamer weed on there all year. Even for winter, there's still bits of streamer weed. And the section that I will be focusing on is still streamer weed there. So I don't see them seeing that floating braid as a problem. It, it, it reacts pretty much the same way that um, the streamer weed reacts. So it's, I don't see it as a problem. I've never had it as a problem before. And the hooking potential of fish is far better as far as I'm concerned. Well, but the main reason I'm doing that is because, for one, it puts me in direct contact with fish faster, and it also gives me the opportunity later on to to just slip a um, a quick a quick change over to a lead clip, a, a nice heavy lead, and then walk out onto the spot, drop a big piece of luncheon meat in, bite up bank, and just rest my rod up against the rest rod rest, and just sit there, just just a, just about an hour before it goes dark. And about half an hour into darkness, just to see if that that, that I don't get that that bell. Because I fish with bells, I don't fish with, with buzzers on on river. I fish with bells. So and I will only fish be fishing one rod, but there's barbel there. I've seen them, and I've been feeding them now for a good while. And and I'm not talking about a few months. I'm talking years. I've been feeding these barbel. I've been putting food in for absolute years. Anything I have spare, any corn that's not been used. It goes into into that section of river. Any any M bits goes into either Treaton or or Night Nature Reserve as well and and uh, um, Don. But but majority of bait were going into the Don because it's on my doorstep. And and believe it, them barbel they've got big, really really big. I mean, it's I ain't fished the section for a long time, but the fish that I've seen the big, the the long long barbel. It's a um, it's a well known area for producing big barbel. It's down near Meadowall, so I'll see how I go tomorrow. But I am hoping mainly on grayling. I, I love I love trotting for grayling, and if I pick, start picking brown trout up, then I've always got a fly rod in boot, and I will take that. I will take me 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 trotting stuff. I'll just leave that on the side at the bank while I fly fish it from with waders on. So we'll we'll see how we go. But the thing is, is the taco shop that I found. That I'm getting maggots from the maggots are honestly the the, the really good quality maggots. Now I know some of you might be thinking, um, maggots are maggots. They're not at all. Far from it. Match fishing days when I uh, I used to match fish. There's a big difference. You can get really shit maggots. Now, when I bought, funny enough, when I went up to and I says, can I have a, a pint of maggots, please? And um. A disclosure and, and bloke behind counter says you have grilling fishing. I says yeah. I says I, I says I am. I'm actually gonna fly fish it. I says but the um, it's always good to have a backup plan. Backup plans always maggots. We we even to the point that if if it's slow fly fishing and you chuck a few maggots in, it, it's kind of cheating really. It's, it's not the purest form of fly fishing, but it works, and you're still catching them on 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 a. a a, re a replicated natural insect which is a, a, a nymph it is a lot of it now is heavy weighted nymphs that i do J just with it, the lead wire that i take out my lead core it's what i use to form a lot of my heavy, heavy weighted nymphs and uh, I, I fish i fish quite it's so simple as well it's just, it's just a small look with with uh, red cotton whip round it with a, it, it's called a, it, it's just an up bead. It's just a bead pushed on first, then red cotton onto it, and then a, a, a layer of lead, and then back over it with lead, red cotton, and then just a few whips up with black cotton. Now I've got some ink, but there ain't boots at Carver Wise that I showed you. And all I do is I fish two nymphs on a, a on a, an up length, and, I, and then I'll fish a, what I call a booby. It's a it's two pieces of foam, really small, hence the name Booba. 
but they cut round. So all I do is I fish with them and they're, they're really, I've had big trout come up and take them off top before them. They really do kind of, they do like them. So a big trout will come up and take them off top sometimes. But it, that's all about the sight, Bob. But it, it's, I want that I want that fly out of there. Then once the flies out there, I will I will let the, the nymphs bounce down the river. And I'm always watching that sight, Bob. It acts just like a flow. And if the sight, Bob, goes under, but normally you will see the line. As it goes down the river, you will see the line, and the line just goes straight tight, and then you're into it. Now, I've had, I believe it or not, about 15 years ago now, probably longer, probably, I was 18, I'm nearly 50 soon, so, it, it, you know what I mean, it's, I was, I was catching salmon par down there, and um, we, we were catching, and it, towards the end of that, probably, when we were about 20, I had my very first salmon out at River Don, and it, it, it was about six pound. It was a really, really nice fish. Nah, we never took it out. We never took it, even though everybody says you should have took it out. You should have ate that one and all that. No, it was it was still a dirty river then. Honestly, there was stuff coming down that that were really bad. Some of the stuff that they're coming down that river. Now I don't get that anymore down here. It's lovely, clean gravel. It's beautiful. Hence why the, why the grayling love it down there so much. It's a clean river now, a really, really clean river. So um, tomorrow I'm going to go down and I'm going to try and look at that. But I've got a few guys that are asking me about um, about, about, uh, about going out uh, with, with fly rod guiding. So I've done it, done it in the past before and it's something I really enjoy doing. I love taking, it's, it's more, mostly uh, the guys that are that, that like in the 60s. 65 or something like that. I take them out and um, I pick them up and I take them out and I'll, I'll go out into the water first with stick to make sure that it's a nice area for them to, to fish from. It's, it's it's nice for them to get a cast in. If, but they're all experienced. majority of them are, are experienced fly anglers. All they're looking for is the security of of someone being there with them really, you know what I mean? So what I do is I go out with prodding stick, make sure that the area is safe from to fish on, there's no drop offs or anything like that. And if there is, I put a, I'll put a pole in from to fish too, so they can hold onto that pole if they do lose the footing. It's just simple things like that. And then they'll go out and, and so, some of them have like 40, 40, 45 uh, grilling in a day. I've had a few lads that have come up here from down south, believe it or not, and they're, uh, they've they've fished the River Don. Now they've fished rivers down south, choke streams, and they've had like six or seven grayling in a day, and they've come up here and they've had further. On fly, on the fly as well. Dry fly fishing. Proper dry fly fishing. And and it, it ain't when when I said to them, I said it ain't gonna be like anything you've done before. These aren't the the uh, splash with colour rainbows, you know what I mean? The foreign fish, as far as I'm concerned. These are wild brown English trout. It's 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 no different to a, a wrong and in cap carp fishing for me. It's a wild brown English trout, and believe me, they are beautiful fish. So tomorrow, my co lens is coming with me because I'm loving. I'm wanting to get one of them. Want to, I'm wanting to get the kipe on one of those big aggressive males that are always they snap. They, the jaws are always snapping. Anything goes near them, they're snapping. But believe it or not. Those big ones are normally caught when I'm retrieving. So I'll, I'll put a rod out and I'll, I'll be retrieving and that's when I'll let into them. But when Marie comes with me, she, she takes a spoon, low fishing, and she'll just flip it out. And she's pretty she's pretty damn good at it, you know what I mean? She can, she can cast all right at it. And she's, she's got, she got really good at it. At one point, she had me for a long time. I'm hoping to get her out on Sunday. Because she enjoys it and I'm hoping to get her out Sunday. She's had bad numbers and that, so get her out on some to see what we can do but she she flicks spun out and, and just retrieves it slowly and both uh, honest some of the trout she's had they've been absolutely really really big trout uh, always brownies never rainbows always brownies the sections our fish are always brownies is there uh, believe me the day that that, that the river donny stopped with rainbow trout will be a very very sad day indeed and i mean that a very sad day for the simple reason of it is very, very rare in this country now to find a river that has specifically got wild brown trout and grayling in the numbers that the Don has. I'm, I'm telling you now, there were people watching this down south thinking I've lost it, but I am telling you now, if you want some seriously good 
grilling fish in and I'm talking nice big nice big grilling as well you know like two and three pound grilling sometimes you, you let bigger fish than that chub my brother goes down there all the time he's having he's having chub at five pound five pound chub bigger he's had, he's had them bigger than that and and the barbel that, that i've up down there they've just been colossal they have just absolutely smashed me to pieces when i used to fish on, on, on maxima they smashed me to bits so i'm like i was at like six seven pound line they smashed me to pieces absolutely smash me to bits now i don't know whether they were barbel or i don't know if they were trout because the trout down there they fight and and when they get to that aggressive stage of you know in the aut late autumn and you've got that big kite the teeth are really really re i'm telling you they're, they're, more, they're more ferocious they're as ferocious as the pike i'm telling you now honestly they really are as ferocious as the pike they're unbelievable it's her, um, so I'm going to try and get her out this one. I think I'll do it well, the good, because she's had some bad news, like I said. We ain't had a, a great few days, man. It's been terrible. <laughs> so I'm hoping that if we can get out, get down that river, and um, have a pop at some some um, grayling on fly rod, and then long trotting, because I love long, long trotting. But, uh, but I'm also wanting to go, there will be one spot I will be fishing for the grayling and brown trout, and then the other spot will be... Uh, solely for the barbel, like I said, but there's another a spot within walking distance, probably 60 yards from from where I'm fishing, where I've, I've had I've had some really seriously big perch, and uh, they're they're at the forefront of my my fishing, de definite. The poles come in with me, three rods are coming, the fly rods come in. That that is always with me anyway. I keep that all the time in case I ever see a carp on top in summer with a, with a coat ball. You know what I mean? I always and I love catching them on top with, with fly rod. If you ain't never done that, then, then you've never really experienced the, the true power of a fish really. uh, on, on a really light fly rod. It's incredible. It's um, So that's always coming with me. And then I've got an old, what, what, a, a garden all around a rod, which I absolutely love. It's it's a lovely rod for trotting, but it's also nice for fishing, like I said earlier on, with, with, a, um, with braid, with a bell on, and heavy meat. A nice heavy lead, so it's not going to be moved about. Long up length, big piece of meat on. When I say big piece of meat, I'm talking about one of the smaller tins chopped in off. Boom, big hook on it, big air rig. Piece of foam on, drop it in, leave it, few pellet round it. As soon as that, so the, the minute that rod goes, you know you've had... You, you, there's no need for alarms, guys. Just just honestly, get some get some of the bells and you will get a few taps first. On, you'll get a few bells, the bell will start. When, when you get them feeding. Now all that up bit is really is, is when they're coming in and they're sucking pellet up, but then one will just take it and there's no need for anything. It's, when a barbel takes it, 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 it takes it, it's rods pretty much new. If, it, if you're not new fast, it, it, your rods pretty much in water because I fish locked up. I'm fishing to a far margin spot. So it can't really run. It could run perhaps 12 foot away from me but they never do they run downstream and they know what they're doing and then they'll turn side on so the water flows hitting them from the side which is getting a maximum pressure on that on on on, on the angle you're playing them at and it's how a lot of them are lost that's why you always need waders so you can play it and walk down to it and then get get so the fish is above you and then bring it back down in the net and then scoop under now the only problem i've got is I ain't got a small net, so for the perch fishing, I'm gonna to have to use. I've got a net that's a little bit smaller than a 42 inch, I think it might be 32 or something like that. But that's gonna to have to come with me. But majority of fishing I do anyway when I'm uh, trotting, long trotting is, it's I'm in water, so I just scoop them to me and then just pick them up, unhook them, disgorges on a piece of elastic around my neck, so I just unhook them and then straight bite. But I do want some macro shots at a perch, and I also want some of trout and grilling. So watch out for that because it's going to enjoy that tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. So we'll see. Check you later, guys.